right, welcome back to the vlog. If you're new here, my name is Chris and I build productivity apps. I usually focus on one productivity app per video. So today we're gonna to be focusing on Ellie. A little bit of context on Ellie. It's a daily planning app and it's basically your to-do list and calendar combined. If you're someone that likes to plan your day or time box, you should go check it out. I think today we're gonna to be doing like a day in the life type video just cause I really miss doing these type of videos. And the main thing we gotta work on today is spring cleaning for the app. So first let me go over what spring cleaning is. Typically the way I work is I focus on, you know, one or two major features for the app at a time. So the last two major features that I focus on were the iOS widgets and the Outlook integration. When I work on major features, I usually have to focus really hard and a lot of smaller requests get left behind in the process. What I've decided to do is block out two or three weeks after every major feature to just focus on these smaller requests and improvements. So yeah, I call this time period the spring cleaning week because we're basically spring cleaning the app. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna take you guys through one of those spring cleaning days. So let's take a look at some of the things that we can work on here. I obviously use Ellie to plan my day. So I have a spring cleaning list here. So I'm just gonna go through this in the feedback board and just pull things that I think we can work on today. Okay, there's absolutely no way we can do everything on this list, but I think we can get like some of this done at least. What I'm gonna do is just go through one by one and just try to tackle each one of these. And I think this is the order I'm gonna try to tackle it to. Okay, so let's just get started. It's been like 30 minutes. I actually got the first thing done already. So Ellie has this Mac menu bar that shows upcoming calendar events. So this user was reporting if you just have an Apple calendar linked, it doesn't show the events. But if they linked both an Apple and a Google calendar event, then the Apple event started showing up. I had an idea of what was going on and it turned out to be the case. It was a super easy fix. Basically the way I coded it was I load Google calendar events. When that's done, I load Apple calendar events. But the problem is, if there are no Google events, it just would never reach the Apple calendar events. That's what was going on, it was just like five lines of code. It took about like 30 minutes to figure this out. So yeah, bug number one fixed. Okay, the next thing we gotta work on, um, it's pretty interesting. So in the web version, we have this feature where you can estimate how long a task is gonna take, and then you can also track how long it actually took you to complete the task. We show this on the task card, and at the top we have the totals for all those numbers. And this is great to see like, you know, how much work did I commit to today? Is it too much or is it too little? So we have this feature on the web, and it kind of exists on the iOS app, but not really. When I coded up the iOS app, there's very limited space. And so I didn't want to put those chips that we have on the web version on the iOS app. So I decided to add it very subtly on the card just to make it look less cluttered. And then there is no add task button at the top with the totals. Instead, we have this purple floating button. That's what I did on the iOS app. Some users have actually said, we want it to function exactly like it does on the web on the iOS app. I think a good compromise is to make it optional so users can turn it on if they want the iOS app to look more like the desktop app. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna port over the feature, which is not that hard, and then put it under a setting so users can toggle it on and off. I think I can get this done in an hour, so we're gonna go speed run this. Okay, so made a ton of progress. It's not 100% done, but it's like 95% done, and I'll, I'll do the finishing touches tomorrow, probably. It took some iteration, and it was mainly just trying to figure out the, the colors, the font, the margin, and everything. Now we have the chips on the right side of each card that show the total, so again, here's the before. You can see we do have the estimated actual time, but they're kind of at the bottom of the card. They're really subtle. And then here's the new version, which is basically the same as the desktop app, it shows the actuals and totals on the right side. Way more prominent, way easier to see. And then we have the, um, the add task card at the top instead of the floating purple button. And it shows all the totals there. It's actually a lot better than I thought. I was worried it was gonna be super, super cluttered, but I'm actually really liking this layout. So I might even start using this. I'm not 100% convinced everyone's gonna like this though. So um, instead of just, okay. Right now I've decided to make it a setting and it's off by default. You go to settings, you go down, you can see we have a setting. I also couldn't figure out what to call this setting without being confusing. I decided to make it about that task creation button. So you can either choose between having it at the top with the totals or the purple floating button. So you can toggle between them. Um, and again, it's gonna default to the purple floating button like it always is. And then I also made this help center article that outlines what this is. I'm gonna sit on it for a day though, cause I think there's a better way I can name this. The feature is basically complete. If people actually really like this and I see a lot of people switching to it, I might just make this the default and turn off the purple floating button. So that was fun working on those two things. Let's go take Luna on a walk. Okay, just finished the walk. Um, yeah, we're gonna go check out this coffee shop downtown. Just go meet up with someone, do some work. I'm gonna continue working on this stuff. So that's the game plan.
Okay. All right, so it's the next day. I was planning on filming a lot more, but we ended up going to this all-you-can-eat sushi place for my friend's birthday, and my mind was not functioning after that. So it didn't really work or film anything after that. But I actually got a lot done at the coffee shop, so let me walk you guys through what I was able to get done. Added this quick feature to the iOS app because it looked pretty easy. Now you can quickly add tasks to the app by holding down the home icon, and these two buttons will appear to add a task to today or add a task to the breakdown. Wasn't too bad. It was probably like 30 lines of code to do this. The same functionality kind of exists on the iOS widget where you click the plus button there. It opens the app and the creation modal pops up, so leveraging a lot of the same code for that. The other thing that took the bulk of the time was I made an improvement to the Zapier integration. So if you don't know what Zapier is, it's basically a platform where you can connect apps and make automations. So let's say I change something in Ellie and I wanna update something in Notion. You can use Zapier to do that. Three months ago, I released the first version of this integration. The first version supported updating data in Ellie. If something happens in another app, you can do something in Ellie. A great example is if you wanna automate like a Shopify store or something. So if an order comes in, you can automatically have it create a task in Ellie with a bunch of information. But yesterday, I decided to make it enhancements so that it supports the reverse direction. So when something happens in Ellie, you can do something in another app. Let's use the same e-commerce example. So maybe you could set up an automation where when you complete a task, it sends an email to the warehouse to fulfill the order. Now you can connect Ellie to thousands of apps and it got a lot more powerful yesterday. So I'm basically just gonna do the same thing for the next week. I'm just gonna keep making these small improvements every single day. Even though they're small improvements, they all really add up to make this great experience. I think that's where I'm gonna wrap the video. If you like this kind of content, go check out my TikTok and Instagram. I post every other day about building productivity apps. Obviously, if you like this series, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.